insurance mandate and the PRS pickup mandate. The employer cannot pay more than 85%. The employee has to pay at least 15%. Now you can negotiate under the terms of Senate Bill 5, you can negotiate it above 15%, but uh, the employee has to pay at least 15%. Uh, and then with regards to the PRS pickup, it mandates that uh, the county will be prohibited from picking up the uh, employee share of the PRS contribution. Uh, currently, uh, some county departments have already done away with this. Uh, other county departments have not, depending on who the appointing authority is. Uh, and certainly, again, going back to the whole issue with classified employees, people who had had it previously, you know, still have it. You know, so, in other words, before, without Senate Bill 5, you could have made a change going forward, but you can't make a change for those who are already in existence. Senate Bill 5 essentially allows you to hit the reset button um, and, you know, go back and take away the PRS pickup from the employees who currently have it. Uh, or actually mandates that you go back and take away the PRS pickup from the employees that already have it. There's some question as to, you know, long term, I mean obviously it's going to produce the county some short term savings. Um, because for all of those like myself who have a 4.65% pickup currently, you know, um, I start paying that out of pocket. The county no longer has that obligation. And so certainly the uh, county will see, you know, immediate savings from that. Uh, it, it's unknown what the long-term savings will be uh, because, take for example the situation we had 30 years ago when the commissioners voted to put in the 4.65% pickup. Um, on the table of negotiations at that point was essentially a 6% raise for county workers, and it was back in 1980 or 1 or 82 when it happened. Uh, rather than the commissioners at the time giving a 6% raise, they agreed to give the 4.65% uh, PRS pickup, which actually saved the county money at the time. Uh, because, again, the workers actually got, because of the way the tax structure works, the workers got a, essentially a 6% raise in their take-home pay, but it only cost the county 4.6%. Had they given a 6% raise rather than the 4.6% pickup, and then, of course, you know, we factor in the cumulative aspects of subsequent raises, if you had a, an employee in 82 that was making $30,000, and they'd given the 6% raise rather than the 4.6% pickup, and you fact figure that they had 10 3% raises between over the last 30 years between now and then, the county would be paying you know, about $1,800 more for that employee today than they are. Now the question is then, when does the county see those savings I just talked about? And that is, the answer to that is it depends uh, on which of those previous classifications of employees that we were talking about. Uh, for unclassified employees who are not subject to a class, uh, collective bargaining agreement and for classified employees who are not subject to a collective bargaining agreement, it's immediate. Uh, as soon as it goes into effect, um, the health insurance and the PRS pickups, you know, go away. Uh, or at least 50% above on the health insurance. Uh, the, for unclass, or I'm sorry, for classified employees, whether they, or I'm sorry, for collective bargaining employees, those that are subject to a collective bargaining agreement, whether classified or unclassified, it would go into effect at the end of whatever current collective bargaining agreement they are under. Obviously, the reason for this is that essentially you would have to, the legislature would have to invalidate an existing contract and that would have created more legal problems than uh, the legislature was willing to take up. So they basically said, okay, if you have a collective bargaining agreement ex in existence, when that collective bargaining agreement expires, these provisions go into effect. Now you've seen across the state, there are essentially two theories under which you know, people are currently negotiating these contracts then. One is to lock in the best deal you can now for you know, a period of, of three years or more. Uh, because they feel that there's some leverage with the uncertainty of Senate Bill 5. Uh, the other one, and I believe from our previous discussions, the one that, that the county's favoring is essentially looking at, you know, currently for those that, that have expired collective bargaining agreements, one-year deals, see where it leaves us, and, you know, then we come back to the bargaining table next year. Uh, the last, uh, 
or it would then be elected officials. Um, and through my reading of Senate Bill 5, uh, because of the way they did the definition section, uh, I don't know that Senate Bill 5 clearly applies to elected officials. There seems to be a hole there. Um, and so there'll be probably some uh, litigation to determine whether or not it actually even applies to elected officials. But assuming that it does, it would not affect elected officials until the expiration of their current term. Um, because there's a constitutional provision which prohibits uh, adjusting the compensation of an elected official mid-term. So because the Constitution trumps the state legislature, the state constitution prevails, and that constitutional provision would pro prohibit it from taking effect until uh, for elected officials until their next term, if it at all applies to elected officials.